What is up, YouTube? How are we doing? Welcome. I'm Louisie21, this is the podcast, and this is number 20. And it's kind of like a focal point of the vlog, like an ending of like the first season of, not vlogs, but podcasts. Damn it, why am I always saying vlog? Anyway, yeah, roll the intro right about now. Okay. Okay. Alright guys, I mean, welcome back, how you doing first of all, what you've been doing in your beautiful lives, working, enjoying the weather, suffering in the heat, I've done all of those too. And credit to those of you, those nine to fivers or anyone who works long hours on that daily grind, you know, to get the money, to secure the bag, if you know what I'm saying. Credit to all those people, because I've got it easy, you know what I mean? Um, so, like, I love what I do. That's about it, really. Not everyone does. People are working towards their dreams. It's okay to dream. They don't always come true, but you might as well dream. What's the point otherwise? If you say, oh yeah, I'm going to be homeless, no. No one, no one really thinks like that. Well, some people just mess up, and that's fine. It's okay to mess up in the process, because we all do. That's how you learn. And recently I've been reading um, a book called The Life of a Wannabe Mogul Mental Disarray um, by Bella Thorne. You may have heard of her. She is an interesting character. A legend, in my opinion. Like We need more people like that. Of course, yeah, a lot of negatives, yeah. She's been through to get to where she is today. And we all have. And it really makes you think about, like, however much success or fame you have, there can still be dark times and sad times and difficult times, but you get through them. You don't go around them or avoid them. You know, she exaggerates the point that there's no cheat code for life. you just got to go through it head on. Um, it's a really motivational book. And myself, I kind of overcome this is this is not that on that level at all but I kind of had a phobia of buses because they always broke down whenever I used the bus the ramp would get stuck and the bus would get stuck and I'd either be stuck on the bus or they or not even that they'd reject me and say no we're too full get the next bus one day it was about five buses I took this was like seven eight years ago and since then I swore not, not to use a bus then I got my car and I drove everywhere practically. Or I stayed local and went on foot. But then yeah, a few weeks back I just thought, screw it. It's such great weather. I've got to make the most of this grab situation by the bulls. You know what I mean? And just go out and risk it on the bus. And it's all good. It's been all good. I've been to so many places. Central especially. Hyde Park. Camden Town, which was a great vlog. Hyde Park also. Brent Cross, that's more local. But I've, I've just been using the bus all the time. Even when I go to the park, if I want to get home quicker than walking back or whatever. Just take initiative, you know. Learning all the bus routes. Uh, thanks to my PA, of course. There's a bus routes better than I do. So together we've been trying to get on these buses. And hopefully not be stuck on a bus. It did happen on one of the trips. It was a really hot day, so that apparently the ramps don't work when it's hot. But anyway, when the ramps out, the bus can't move. So it was a kind of traumatic few minutes. Everyone was like going mad at the driver, like I felt sorry for him. Well, you can't be leaving him on this bus; it's boiling on here. You know, and I'm like, okay, don't get mad at the bus driver though. And then obviously I was trying to say, look, if you move, if you park nearer to the curb, you get the ramp perfect on the curb, but the ramp wouldn't come out because the curb was blocking it. But yeah, we figured it out, and that was the only downfall of using the bus. And that only happened once, but overall, it like. This is big for me and for the vlog. We can go so much further afield. Don't know why I didn't think of this earlier, you know. Because I always had my car, but I was like, no, I don't want to drive down central London. But I've been taking a lot of buses. Um, you know, I'm not ashamed to say that I didn't like, I didn't approve, I didn't, didn't agree with buses. But as a driver on the road, they're really annoying, but you see why they're useful. Obviously, trains are another thing altogether, forget that. Not many trains I can get on, really. It's not worth it all the time. Depends where you're going, but yeah. 
and so I've overcome that and this has been great it's something new you know new adventure new challenge for the vlog of course because so many times I was going to the same park it was getting repetitive I said it before and this vlog is going to be all real talk like that vlog I in the past I named named real talk I try and keep them all real but you know I might do that as a series within the podcast I keep saying vlog damn it um, but yeah, I hope you, if you've been through something like that, overcome it. It's a simple thing, you know. It's mind over matter. But, like, I just take it in my stride. It's like a normal thing now. But most of the times, I'll be honest, I've ended up in pubs, especially in Camden. That was, like, the day before the hottest day of the year, and that was too hot. Bearing in mind, on that hottest day of the year, as you saw from the vlog, I was at a rugby match at Coptal Stadium. Took the bus there, too. That was unbearably hot on the bus yeah the bus is hot in the summer it's just not real it's unreal you can barely open the windows but one thing you notice is no one talks it's society nowadays everyone's either on their phone or keeping them to themselves no one talks like in a social way on the bus anyway it would be excuse me thank you blah 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 all that you know what I mean it's just weird it's weird but um I feel like, I don't know, you don't see many people like me on the bus. I, of course I can say that. But then the one time there was someone else in the wheelchair on the bus, I was like, oh, for God's sake, I want to get this bus, get off. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, there's always a woman in the pram. I don't get frustrated with it. I just ask them any chance you could move, or they normally move. Like, oh, sorry, I'm in your way, blah, blah, blah. But some of them don't really want to move. The other day I went on the bus, there's a suitcase in my space. Just pushed it out of the way and went in my normal space. But yeah, in the hot weather it's unbearable on a bus. You get a few weirdos, depends where you are as well. And on the way down to Camden, I knew I was in Camden when some geezer in a mohawk got on the bus. Like if you've got a mohawk haircut, you're definitely some sort of punk rock person. I don't know, but um, it, it was like a few weeks back when I started using the bus. So the general reaction, the initial reaction, is that gone? I was planning to do this vlog weeks ago, but the weather's been so nice. Why would I? Even now, I can see behind me the sun's coming out. You know what I'm saying? I did a live stream this morning again. Shout out to a good friend, friend of mine, Jack, who also does gaming live streams. My hair is a mess. Jesus, bad hair day. Um, I just let my hair grow literally. But yeah, as I was saying, live stream is what I did earlier. Different game though, not FIFA, Red Dead Redemption. And I've ordered the NFL game Madden, Madden 19, um, just because I want to see how it is. I'm curious. And I don't really know much enough about NFL, considering I got a Tom Brady jersey. Thanks, Mum. <laughs> um, but yeah, i got to wear that at some point. But this was the only day I thought I could do a vlog, really podcast no. this is just a tradition that I don't even try to say vlog or mess up deliberately for, for comedy it's real it's real but like no I, I'm getting so many funny looks on the bus probably I, I'm so stylish that's probably why my new sunglasses help you know what I mean or people just you know some people might look at me in like astonishment in some way like wow he's it's good that he's getting out you know what I mean Get him out get him out once a week, you know. Good boy, you know what I'm saying? Don't be look don't like being looked at in that way at all. Like I'm I'm I am i am a human. I'm not a child. Uh, that's the thing, like you get treated like a child, maybe I don't look quite young. But do you know what I mean? Like talk down to you, like don't talk down to me. You don't know what I've been through in my own life. But you should never judge really, you don't know. The people around you on the bus, you don't know what they're going through on that day. Um no, but I just take it in my stride. I'm used to being stared at, to be honest. Some in a positive way, some maybe not. Uh, the best reaction is from kids, though. Um, obviously, you would ask questions, wouldn't you? Like, you'd be curious of something you've never seen before. But yeah, that's how it is. That's life. I get used to it, you know. I mean, a friend of mine was telling me that I'm a good example to motivate others, like able people and other people in general. People who are depressed and like, feeling bad about their own situation when it could be a lot worse 
I mean, even if it's not ideal for people, you can still make your own path and grab the situation by the nuts, if you like, and take control. That's the only way, you know, I mean, don't force it, but um, I just love being around people outdoors, in different environments, whether I'm vlogging or not. Um, I don't care, I mean, I'm probably getting stared at for that too, talking to a camera, all that. Bear in mind, I'm rolling around with my um, sound system on my chair. Like, people wondering where the music's coming from. I'm just putting the, the speaker on my footrest. So it's kind of hidden, so like, banging out tunes going around Camden, or, or Highgate, or, or Highgate? No, not Highgate. <laughs> Hyde Park. Bear in mind, I've passed Highgate on the bus. But yeah, I'm driving around with that speaker as well. But obviously not on the bus, I'm not banging out tunes on the bus. That'd just be annoying for everyone. But so that's been great. I mean, I'm going to do it a lot more. Definitely go back to Camden, for sure. But yeah, I feel like I fit in in Camden because the weird and wonderful in Camden. I'm not saying I'm, I, am, I am weird. I am, my brother will tell you I am weird and awkward and all that. But in Camden, I felt like at home in some ways. I don't really dress like a punk rocker that much. I don't mind that kind of music too much. I like The Clash, if you know what I mean. That reminds me of Camden a lot. That kind of music. You know, more classic rock, you know. Led Zeppelin, all that stuff. Pink Floyd, of course. So it's a mix of music from that, from the different eras that Camden has. And I was in a, a vinyl st store in Camden. I had CDs as well, but like all vinyls and stuff. I was just in my element, all this rock music. All the, these famous albums over the years. You know, Ver Velvet Underground, Frank Zappa. Um, so many more artists, Bob Dylan, you know, so many different styles that I seem to like. Camden is, is made for that sort of thing. And another thing I was saying to one of my cousins is that why do all the Italians love Camden? We're just drawn to it. I mean, I would have been drawn to it anyway, I think, but I've got to be there more often, I've got to go there more often. Most times I'm there is at night getting pissed. So this made a change. I ended up in two pubs, so can't stay away, cannot stay away from pubs. And the and people were really kind around there, like any place I asked them use a disabled bathroom, anything like that, you know. In Italy they look at you funny and they'd be like, Well buy a drink first. We're like, no, let me use the restroom. You know what I'm saying? They were kind about that, so that was good. Um may, maybe because it's a touristy area, so they you have to be nice to tourists. Us locals don't get treated so nice. So what do you want? <laughs> but yeah, the World's End pub in Camden, I recommend it. I did a little Facebook review of it, actually. Because whenever you tag yourself in a location on Facebook, it asks you for a view now. A review. Um, but yeah, more recently, this weekend my parents went away. And me, my brother, and some of his mates, we had a fair few drinks. Alcohol was consumed at quite a high rate, let's just say that. Um, and then we all fell asleep <laughs> on the sofa. It's quite funny. It's me in my chair to sleep, snoring away, according to my mate. Um, but that was fun. Then Sunday, met up with my cousin, hung out with him a bit, went to an Italian restaurant in Finsbury Park. So I've been around recently. I've been exploring my own London. That you know, I need. I I needed to. Uh, so many places I've been, but so many places I haven't been. And remember that, like, it could be somewhere down the road that you've never been before. There will pe be people who get fed up of a place really quickly, assuming they've seen everything. Be like, oh yeah, I've been there, I know that area off by heart, but I learned that even I, I'm clueless when it comes to buses as well. It's not as easy as you think. You literally got to know which bus, otherwise you'd be in another part of London. But there's so many parts of London that are passed on the way central from here that I want to see. Hampstead especially, you know. Um, so, there's more journeys to be had. Life is a journey, really. Um, yeah, I enjoy the journey more than when, when I get to where I'm going. You know what I mean? I, I don't know why. But you should, really, in some ways. Like, when you're climbing the mountain, you enjoy that more than when you get to the summit. The journey towards the success. Like, so many people say that, and that's what you know, they they talk about when they talk about success. 
the journey to that success, they had more fun than actually when they got there. Because once they got there, what else was to be done? There was no more you could do. And well, that's why you see these rich people, they get depressed because they've got everything, they've done everything there is to do. What more can you do? There's a high, they set the, bar, the bar is higher for them. So like, for me, if I go to like a restaurant and eat pizza, that I'm at a nine, you know what I mean, or at eight. Uh, if you're rating out of ten, I'm at an eight. But if a rich guy who's got his own chef goes to a normal pizzeria to have a pizza, he might be at three or four because he gets better food at home by his personal chefs. You know, if you're if you've got a BMW and it's the best car you've ever owned and you've saved up for it and stuff, that's fine. And you want to love that car, but if you're a rich guy and you've got three BMWs, another BMW is not going to make a difference to you. You know, you've got a private jet instead, so the bar is higher is at different levels. It doesn't mean that unappreciative or anything, but anyway, like I said, the journey. So going back to buses, I do enjoy the journey sometimes. If it's not too hot on the bus, stick my headphones in, you know, get get in the zone if you like. Um, you know, just think about all the things, all the good things. I don't know. It's weird. Some people just be like in a trance on, on journeys like that. And there will be moments when I'm like that, like planning out what I'm going to do when I get to where I'm going. The vlog, you know, what I'm going to say. What's the theme of that vlog? To really get in that mindset. What the theme is. It's not. There's always a theme to my vlogs. It's just a bit general sometimes. And when I get deep, it's good. But it's like. It can be a bit negative sometimes, but so yeah, I'll be on a journey banging out different tunes. Um, I got too much music that I like, so I can never decide on the playlist. I just shuffle everything and get surprises along the way, whatever tune comes on. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the joy. You can just switch off and just enjoy. I don't, know. I don't know. Like I enjoy like the whole thing of getting to the bus stop and like working out what bus you've got to get on, you know, all that, and, and you, you, you can easily get lost, and it doesn't even matter. Well, I'm, I'm acting like it doesn't even matter, because I've got nowhere I've got to be in a rush. Um, it's just about planning and stuff. Planning can get you a long way. Like, most days I just don't even think I'll be on that, in that day, in that moment, I want to think about the next day, and that'll be a problem. So, when it came to these sort of journeys, um, I didn't really think too far ahead, so maybe the night before I was like, okay, I'm going to go there, let me see the bus route on my phone, let me check the map, map, mop. let me check the map how long it takes to get there, and what you've got to do is just a bit of initiative, just don't be lazy, I was so lazy, like, just watching Netflix or YouTube or whatever, and, it, you know, being part of my city is just so much better, because London is my city at the end of the day, and I speak to so many people who from Italy who want to come here, a great, a good friend of mine, um, she's looking to move over in January and live here and work here and all that, I said, well, it's not easy, but it's doable, certainly, the, the more open you are as a person, London is a place, and, you know, some, in her case, you will easily make friends, um, some people not so much, but if you've got people you know in, in somewhere in a country already, it's so much easier to move there. Because you just get so much welcome from other people. Like when I've got relatives that come over, they know because we're here, you know what I mean? So it's, it's a help. So her, in her case, knowing I'm here, and she's got friends here, and things like that, you know, it sets you at ease a bit. You know, you've got some, a shoulder to lean on, you know, something to fall back on. But some people will take the risk, they've got no family, they come out here and start from scratch, literally. And credit to those people because, you know, what I mean, they've probably been through so much to have been in that situation. You know, I mean, there's people literally coming out of some sort of desperation to find a normal life and a job and all that. And she's trying to say, well, um, you know, England's so much better, this and that. I prefer the English language. I'm like, what? Don't be forgetting your roots. I like mean, I love Italy. I, ne I wouldn't necessarily move there because they're quality of life, like, for someone in my position, all the wheelchair equipment I need, and all that, and the car, and all that, 
it wouldn't be feasible really though I'd love to it would be a step backwards job wise and all that I can vlog I can live over there and vlog but it wouldn't be the same interactions I get in London uh, I love it in another language but my friend was saying she loves English more okay maybe from my point of view I can see what she means by that yeah fine but I was like don't be forgetting your roots um because I'm here and I'm always thinking about there because most of most of my family are there. A lot of friends too. Um, so, it's a fine line, but I'm really excited if my friend does come over in January. Because we're just going to hang out so much. And just, I'm going to be a tour guide again. And I love these, I, I, I'm not scared of buses now. I love taking these journeys to different locations. So I'm going to have someone to show as well. And it's, it gives you a different, a different point of view. If you're looking at it from some, Someone who's looking at it from a totally new a new angle, like they might have a different opinion or see it in a different way, so it might open my eyes to a certain place that I never appreciated in, in the same way. And it's just so so like simple, simple things are the best sometimes. Um, you know, people go out of their way to organize these big events and like holidays and stuff but the simplest things can be the most joyful sometimes like yeah I'm going, I can't wait to go on holiday of course but I forget all the quality stuff I got here and it's, it's easy to get unappreciative you just got to stay hum humble you know remember what you got or what you haven't got work towards it you know um, some people can, can just be a lot more negative even if they've got all this stuff around them but it's just about opening your eyes to it and other people can help you see that when they come with a different point of view um, I'm quite a positive guy but I, s I see a lot of people that aren't so in the same way and it's hard to change people's attitudes because they see you happy and it kind of makes them more sad that they're not happy in the same way yeah I'm happy but I'm not not everything's perfect it's not all peachy I mean you know it could be I, I'm not saying it could be it could be wise, but it could be better. You know, everyone wants better. There's things that I, that I can't change, though. Do you know what I mean, I don't live with regret in that sense. If something's not my fault. How can I be angry about that? Do you know what I mean, yeah, I'm not everybody, but that doesn't make me angry. What makes me angry is when me myself I say no, I can't do that. When I actually can, and it is possible. Things that people tell you, you can't, you actually can. Sometimes I go a bit overboard and they'll be like scaring the hell out of my mum and dad wanting to do something that's so risky and like crazy. Well, to them anyway. They, you know, they, they get annoyed if I swear, for Christ's sake. So, like, oh, don't drive on your road, you know what I mean? That's dangerous. Um, yeah, I kind of take a risk doing that. But life is a risk. If you play it safe, where are you going to get to? You're just going to stay safe. You know, you don't buy a ticket, you don't win the raffle. I've said it before, and if you are down, just know that it could be worse and there's people in the same boat as you. Me, as happy as I am, I have sad days and pissed off days. And days where I just want to tell everyone to piss off. But don't we all? But, um, you know, you just put a mask on sometimes. But when I'm out and about and stuff, I'm not, I'm not annoyed. I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it. Part of the vlog, you see. Um, there's not too much acting that I do. I exaggerate a bit, yeah. It's a bit more crazy, but for a vlog, you have to kind of exaggerate your personality a bit and bring out the best quality, if not the worst. Some people bring out the worst; it brings out the worst in them. But you still got to be yourself. And I've done so many vlogs that I forget that sometimes I get annoyed at myself when, like, there's people around them not vlogging with the same passion or energy because I, I'm afraid of what people think. Even me, it is as little as I care about what people think at the same time there's a bit of me that still does and that small bit can help you sometimes or it can stop you doing what you want to do do you know what I mean? Wor worry about what other people think when they're staring at you I mean, in my case anyway like mind your own friggin business get on with your own shit but at the end of the day I don't mind if it invites conversation by all means well, you know if you want to chat to me that's fine I am a human being, I'm not a robot. I'm not the Terminator, for Christ's sake. 
Um, it's just extra weird going around with a camera talking to myself. But I've gotten over that, slowly but surely. But it depends what subject you're on about. I don't want to be offending people, but yeah. On, on that Camden vlog, I just felt at home and free because there's so many different and strange and wonderful things going on around me. So I wasn't the centre of attention. I was in the melee of it, you know, in the middle. Like, I, like don't try to be normal. Because no one, no one is normal in this world. Um, don't try to be, because you're not, you know, don't force anything like that. Don't, don't try to be someone you're not. Or like try and, try and fit in. Why try and fit in? All the people that are most successful were outcasts at school or bullied or something or put down by others or told no at some point and look where they are now. They're all different in some way. But that thing that made them different is the thing that gave them the success. That extra thing that some people, I'll be honest, just don't have. Um, everyone has the potential though. It's just about expressing that and finding your lane and your route to take. I um, mean, you're never going to know at first. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm vlogging now. I've been vlogging for years. Podcasting too. But do I know my actual destination? No. All I know is I'm on a journey, you know what I mean? Do I have a, cert, a particular thing I want to achieve? Yes and no, you know what I mean? You always want to better yourself. You want to get more subscribers, yeah. But just... I, I don't know exactly what my plan is with this. But I know I'm good at it, that's all I'm saying. You don't get 87 subscribers sitting on your thumbs all day, do you? Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to stay versatile. Vlogs, live stream, podcast. So when I explain it to people, it's kind of difficult to categorise it. But don't let people categorise you or your situation. If they put you in a box, then how can you break free from that box? It's like so many famous artists. They don't want to be known just as artists. They want to be known as actors, you know, influencers, different kind of things. But yeah, that's the nature of, of, of life. You can't let other people decide for you. I certainly didn't. And no, I mean, if I said 10 years ago I'd be vlogging, I'd be making YouTube like this, I would have never thought I'd have the confidence to even speak to a camera, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I was, I was shy. I'm different now, I'm kind of shy still, yeah. But I'm open to more than I used to be. You have to be in this world. The more closed off you are, the worse it is, you know. Ignorance is, is, is not always good, but it's bliss sometimes. I take pride in the fact that I don't know everything, and that you have to admit you're wrong sometimes. Because I used to always try and be right, and try and prove people wrong and stuff and it doesn't get you anywhere because you're not always right I mean true knowledge is knowing you know nothing I've said it before from podcast 2 back in the day and all the stuff I said there which I can't actually remember but I know the, the in general it was like how far I've come to get to where I am now with this podcast and this channel but I hope you guys can resonate with what I'm saying in some shape or form because we've all been through difficult things that have taken us to where we are now and maybe you're still in the shit maybe you're still in a bad place maybe you're seeing this and maybe something I say will resonate with you and flip a switch or maybe it won't or maybe it'll take time or maybe years from now you'll come back and see this or maybe you're watching this five years from now and you're realising just realise that it's never too late I mean, how many vloggers started at 17? 16, I didn't. I didn't start this till I was 23. But I always watched YouTube and I saw other people do it. I thought, why can't I do that? Because it looks easy, doesn't it? So many people will look at Jake Paul or Logan Paul or Casey Neistat or whatever YouTuber they watch and think, I can do that, easy. But it's the fact that half of the people won't even actually go for it. But I did. So yeah, the phone bloody interrupted me, didn't it? Didn't it? But I'm saying like, 
Yeah, so many people will watch something and think, oh, I can do that easy. But they never actually will. No offence. Um, you know, some people watch it and just appreciate it from a work standard, work point of view, the work you put in. But maybe they're expert in something else. Pardon me. <laughs> Man's bur burping. You know, um, but I actually went out and did it. It's just a matter of doing it, not a matter of waiting or being, being scared. I just went for it. I hesitated for so long. I thought about it for a few months and then just finally did it and then got better with time. I at first didn't think that it would get me anywhere, to be honest. Never conceived, never had any idea that it could get me this far. But I'd still be doing it now. Or that I'd have, well, I expected more, like, subscribers by now, more views in some ways. I never thought I'd actually have the drive to do it, but I did. Shame on me for not believing. Really. Do you know what I mean? I don't regret that. I don't regret it because um, I've, had, I've made so many videos anyway. And I've learned and I haven't had as much feedback as I thought I would have. I haven't had many sweary comments like, or any comments for that matter. More likes and views and stuff as opposed to comments. But at some point you're going gonna, gonna to get some haters but I don't care. They, they've all been for it, all YouTubers. I'm not, not comparing myself to anyone, but the few YouTubers, YouTubers, YouTubers that I watch, and think, okay, maybe I should adopt some of their style, you know. But the main thing I got from all YouTubers, the main thing I got from Casey Knight is that is work. You just got to put in the work, 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 work. You get better at what you're doing with time. The number of videos you put out too, you know. And from that point, I just started grinding, doing so many videos, not caring if they were perfect or not perfect in the editing and stuff where I me me messed up a word I'm doing now but this is live this is like real talk so I don't care if I mess up but you know, I was so particular with all that um, and then watching one of my other YouTubers that I watched quite a lot Austin Augie he, he, you know, he was making so many videos he was knackered daily vlogs literally and at one point he thought I'm going to go for quality over quantity and despite that idea of working all the time, work, 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 to get better at what you do to perfect it, like any art or anything, um, I realised that, yeah, I, I can work hard, but I can put more effort into a slightly longer video, or maybe in a week, instead of making five or four, I'll make two or three, and they'll be better. And, you know, my vlogs ended up being quite long at some point, they still are sometimes, like, you know, they used to be like, sometimes it'd be like 20 minutes, like a few days mixed together and stuff. Then I got more professional and I like, aimed to have like a general story to each vlog, like a story I was telling or a theory I was talking about or some sort of message I was trying to portray. I got that idea from Casey Neistat really. Instead of just being random with the vlogs, you know, having a talking point. Um, so. Between those YouTubers, I got different ideas and looked at different styles, kind of blending them all together, really. Um, but I just knew that you have to have faith and just keep going, and that they've all been through difficult times, and it takes years, years before you build a huge audience. It takes a long time to build an audience. It's not an overnight thing. Whatever you do, just know that Rome wasn't built in a day. And that's true with everything, really. I spoke to one of my cousins who, you know, that they just learned to drive and stuff and, you know, I'm saying that, you know, Rome wasn't built on the day, just take it easy. I know you just learn to drive and want to go all these places, but just, you know, be patient with it and you, you improve, you'll learn. Like with that, with speaking a new language, my friend who wants to move here, she's worried about her English. I was like, well, I'll teach you, you know. but. But, you know, don't be worried about it, just don't be afraid to make mistakes. And be honest about it, just don't be ashamed. And you'll get there, the more, with, with that sort of thing when it comes to learning a language, the more people you talk to, the more you're going to learn. The more videos I make, the more I learn what's good, a good length, what's not so good for the length of a video, what style people like more, how many time lapses to put in, how long the intro should be, 
you know, what music to put in all this. It used to take a l long time doing it. Then I kind of came to a compromise, like do a good amount of videos, but do them good. Not too long, not too short. Long enough so people get the narrative, but not so long that people get fed up. And you know, that certain that time where they'll watch it and then they'll want more straight away, but you haven't given them more straight away. They've got to wait till the next video, you know, that sort of thing. Um, you know, and if you, you know, don't stay on the same, like, in the same uh, scene for that long, if you know what I mean. Yeah, when you're making a point, yeah, a few minutes, but cut scenes and stuff and, like, keep it rolling, you know, keep it quick. Not quick, but, like, you know, keep the, the viewer interested. And I've tried, you know, I've developed that in some ways. Long way to go still is just work, you know, and when you get that chance, that chance to blow up, just take it. And you'll know when it happens. That's what I tell myself anyway. But I'm enjoying the ride at the moment, enjoying every vlog. The journey to this success. And I'm successful now. Because I haven't quit YouTube or you know, you can say that about life. You're successful at life, not by the money you make or what you earn, but how you really feel and like how you treat others and how you make others feel and how they remember you. Um good or bad, you know. First impressions are important. Uh, how people remember you, how they see you. Um, so you could be successful at that. And maybe you could be poor and homeless. You know, that's not how you me shouldn't measure success by money. Or wealth, or like how many cars you've got. Um, we're all trying to get that cash at the end of the day. But it's not all we think about, everyone. You know, this world is so sophisticated. Really, we just apes with technology you know we've got to appreciate the simple things we've got so much at our fingertips now it's so easy the world is so connected yet disconnected all this at our fingertips yet back in the day you'd go and meet someone at their house and hang out on the street or in the park or like you know physically meet people now it's all on your phones you'd be chatting to seven different people but they'll be halfway across the world maybe in another country you'll be connected to other people you never even met and with family of course and stuff but at the same time someone might be down the road you might send them, drop them a whatsapp or a facebook message because they're down the road and you can't be bothered when back in the day you might have make, made the effort to go out your front door and meet them that's why I enjoy so much what I'm doing with this vlog going out now on the bus and with these journeys because I admit I never went out enough like and it was killing me inside and I was regretting it regretting every day and being pissed off and blaming everyone else one thing you can't do is blame others for something that's clearly your fault and hold up your hands and say okay I've got to learn from this and you know maybe at the time you do regret but try not to do things or to, to not do things if you know what I mean and then regret it after take a leap of faith really because I could have not done YouTube and where would I be now still searching for jobs probably some shitty job in the office where I hate my boss and want to kill everyone in the building you know <laughs> exaggerating slightly but you, you get my point there's people who do do that, I've got friends of mine who do work hard every day and secure that bag though, that cash that money that be green um, it's just you've got to be humble though however much money you got and really you want to be rich and crying in a Ferrari Really? You know, I like Ferraris as much as the next guy, but, you know, my, my aim in life is not to own a Ferrari, you know. Because I wouldn't be able to drive it anyway, what would be the point? Just stare, there, stare at it and look at it. That's not the point. You know, it's more than money that people live for in some way. Well, not, not with everyone, but it should be. It should be what people live for, like, interactions with other humans social stuff, you know, socialising, meeting new people, learning, hearing their side of a story or their point of view on life, and it can be an eye-opener. It's just a matter of perspective, I think. I know it could be all BS what I'm saying, but just don't worry what people think. Don't let them confine you to one job or skill or area. 
of expertise, you know. Nobody, nobody I really know is YouTubing like I am, you know. I was doing their own thing, credit to them. Live streams and whatnot and other type of videos, but I've not met anyone that does it like I do. You know, the people I look up to, yeah, I haven't met them. I've seen what they do, yeah. But I haven't met anyone personally around here that does what I do on this scale on YouTube. And I just got to meet more YouTubers, really. Easily done. I can go to like the YouTube convention or whatever, whatever they call it, where all the YouTubers meet. What's it called? Um, not Comic Con. VidCon. Nah. What? You know what I mean? That kind of event. I mean, that's it in America normally, but one day, you know, I'll get there. Climbing up that mountain is the journey that counts. You know. Like I said, once you get there, you got there. You enjoy the journey more getting there. You know, the things you look back on and laugh and just like, I can't believe that. And I just look back at how I first used to vlog. How concerned I was at what you thought. Now I could give a shit. You know, in the neck, like from a judgment point of view. I'm not always going to swear though. I swear when I need to, like, it's real talk, like, it's part of the conversation. It's not like, I'm swearing for, for clickbait. And I did I did just use titles for clickbait all the time, but not so much. Because that was when I was like talking about things in the news and other YouTubers and stuff. Which I do do every now and then, but the videos are more vlogs based around things I'm going through in my life. And I hope you can learn from them and be inspired, because like, people have been telling me that I am inspirational. I, I don't know if I should believe it. I don't. I mean, other people tell me that, yeah, but I'm too modest, probably too modest to admit it. I don't know. I'm shy when, when it comes to compliments like that. It's hard to take a compliment. But I put the work in on YouTube over these years, and I'm proud of it. And just now, honestly, I was trying to back up all my videos that I've done recently onto my hard drive, but two terabyte is taken up. I've been making videos for like three years saving every video clip, every video, all the editing process that's gone into it, all the edits have been saved, you know, all the video clips, all the GoPro footage, or whatever camera I've been using, it's all saved, and I'm running out of memory, I need a new hard drive, a new external hard drive, just all this content, I can't bring myself to ever delete any, because they're all memorable in some way, the good ones, and especially the bad ones, the ones that make me cringe, I have to look back on them and learn. But maybe to some of you they're good. I don't know. It's all a matter of perspective, again. To me something that's trash might be great to someone else. One of my viewers might like a longer video. One of them might like a 10 minute video. You know, or a 4 minute video. Some might watch a minute and then go, go and watch something else, or vice versa. Depending how I start that vlog. Or some might just watch live streams. Or maybe just watch my podcasts or a bit of it, I just hope you get some ounce of knowledge, not knowledge, I'm not giving up knowledge as such, life experience, I mean, 25 years aren't many, but I've been through a lot of shit, I'll tell you that, the people who've been through more, but it's people who've been through less, and all I just want to do is prepare those people, I mean, if you're judging me right now, just, I could care less, so like, like, go and, like, dig a hole, you know, take a long walk off a short pier. Or or if you're embracing what I'm saying, credit to you. If you're judging me from a judging judgmental area state of mind, then screw you. If you have been through life like I have, or been through anything negative ever, which obviously you have been because you're a human being. That's the art of being human. To err is human, you know. If you've made a mistake and regretted it or regret something or something you haven't done that you wish you could have it's never too late just jump in at the deep, just dive in just go for it, don't hesitate I mean, I could have hesitated with the vlogs and not ever done them, but here we are you know, it's a, it's a real it, it is an extension of me, this channel it is part of me no other way of putting it and I've got other things that I do that I love, Padre football you know, drinking all these things, but YouTube brings it all together. It stitches it all together. 
um, before this, I spent a year of searching for jobs, you know, voluntary jobs and stuff. And I, when people ask me what do you do, I really didn't know. Myself, I didn't know what I was gonna do or what I, what my area I was. Like I didn't know. Yeah, I studied journalism. People would call me a journalist, but I really wasn't. So I don't believe that that job could be done by a person anymore. Like, it shouldn't be. A, everyone's a, their own journalist. You make your own news, you know. People report their own news, and I realised that that industry is messed up and corrupted and perverse. So I really didn't want to be part of that tabloid or whatever it was. So I, I'm my own boss, and I do this. It's my, you know, journalism yet helped in some ways. Learning that at uni, but for a year before I started this, I just I had nothing to talk about. Like, what was my area of expertise? What was my influence? And I realised that I watch a lot of YouTube and stuff, and I love TV, movies, music. Why can't I use put that to good use? I talk a lot. I can't shut up sometimes. Let me start a channel, and there we go. Here we are today, and I'm so glad that you could join me on the twentieth podcast, the last in this first series of podcasts, probably until September, October time. I don't know September, but I've got the new season of Padgett Football starting on the 15th of September. I've got the MGK concert on the 31st of August. I've got my summer holiday coming up soon. More trips to be had before then. So much to look forward to, guys. Um, this is a vlog podcast. Not a vlog, this is a podcast. See, I'm still making mistakes. But this is the 20th podcast. That's a lucky number for me. Um, it's a good round number to end on. So more real talk coming at you from Louise 21 once again. I'm going to sign off, guys. I've got to watch that series, The Boys. I'm on episode 5, I think. I'm going to catch up on that and probably finish that, binge watch that and finish that while it's raining, you know. Podcast 20, I will see you back for the podcast soon. Well, little break, let's just say. While I'm away, basically. I'm going to be vlogging again, as usual, always. Um, I'll see you on the next vlog, of course. But thank you for joining me on these podcasts. It's been so many. Um, I want to remind you of the first one a bit. I'm going to get a bit of that and put that at the end of here, of this. So, me in editing, remember to put some footage from your old podcasts in this. Episode 1, basically. Podcast 1, of some of the early ones, where I really said some interesting things. Some things that I think back on and like remember and like they make, they make me feel humble I guess and like made me laugh as well quite a funny guy when I put my mind to it well not really it's normally accidentally that I'm funny if I try and tell a joke I never make my brother laugh if I crash into a desk he's gonna be laughing like no tomorrow but that is the end of another podcast the end of series one of the podcast don't know what I'm gonna do when I come back for the podcast I'll see you on the next vlog though anyway. So whatever you're doing, stay up, stay humble, keep climbing that mountain, enjoy the journey, because that's all that matters, you know. Don't forget to consider others, but love yourself, of course. Otherwise you won't be capable of loving anything or anyone else. That is it for now. Take it easy, fam. As always, peace. Hi fam, how you doing? It's a podcast, not a vlog. So if you're tuning in and expecting a vlog, it's not a vlog. Welcome to you all, Bevan and then yeah, finished uni and that was that was that and uh, YouTube wasn't till maybe two years later when I just thought you know I stopped. Everyone's on YouTube at some point, like watching videos. You go down that you know the YouTube sinkhole if you like. You just watch video after video and then kept seeing all these vlogs came to know what the vloggers that I know and love today that I've mentioned in the past. I'll talk about them later, but anyway. So I came to know these, this vlog, this vlogging style of, of YouTube, and I, I knew that, I, you know, with my journalism knowledge, camera, camera work that I'd done, even my radio show, I knew that I could, I could do it in front of a camera. Um, the difficult part was the editing, the technology that came with that, I'd never done that before, so I taught myself, and lo and behold, here we are. 
permanent in this if the camera holds up and does not break for the 18th time. So take it easy fam, I love you guys. You've been there from the beginning and if you're just joining now, thank you. Still at old school G. The old school G's been there from the outset. The outset. If not for you, I wouldn't have as many fans as I have now. You're all part of the family. Doesn't matter. Uh, whatever you're doing, commit to it 100%. Even if you're not even sure, just commit anyway. And at least you know you tried. Because trying is half the battle, really. Ciao. Ciao belli. Oh yeah, take it easy fab please.